Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. Good to be on. Good to be on with uh, all the Bucknuts folks, and uh, I'm excited about being a part of the site. You're always one of my favorite guys on the beat. Ever since you joined the beat, uh, you're with Rivals, you're with the Ozone. Glad to have you on board now. I tell you what, the quarterback controversy will not go away. We thought it was just going to be during the off season. It has filtered right into the week four of the season. Urban Meyer, of course, picked Cardale Jones as his starting quarterback on Wednesday. Cast, is that what you were expecting? And just what were your thoughts in general when uh, Cardell Jones was named the starter? You know, I mean, if you would have just given me a blank slate and said I hadn't talked to anybody and hadn't heard anything, you know, just based on what I saw on Saturday, based on my overall uh, gut feeling from covering Urban and covering the team, I would have been surprised. I would have said, you know, to me, for them to, to, to pull Cardell out of that game and to ride JT Barrett uh, the rest of the game and, and really – uh, the way that he was not, he obviously didn't uh, come out and light the world on fire. He threw the interception late in the game, uh, almost threw another pick in the end zone. So it wasn't like he went out and really took hold of the job. But, uh, you know, I just I just felt like there was some momentum going in JT's favor. Um, you know, talking to some people, talking to some of the folks at Bucknuts, uh, uh, some of the, the people who are connected, some of my sources, you know, there did seem to be a, a feeling that Cardale was going to get another shot. So I'm not entirely surprised uh, but I can see why an outsider, you know, or, or even a fan that, that maybe isn't connected to Bucknuts, isn't connected to, uh, you, you know, the boarding house and what we do uh, on Bucknuts might have thought it was a surprise. Um, you know, but but overall, I, I'm a little surprised that that's the route he went just in general um, after the way that Cardale struggled with those two interceptions. I thought he might want to give JT a chance, uh, but, you know, I, I, I can understand it. Fortunately, it has not caused a divide in the locker room, Brandon. As far as we know, JT and Cardale are friends, the guys in the locker room. It just seems like it has not caused a divide in the locker room. It has caused a divide within Buckeye Nation, though. I, I get a kick out of looking at our message board. We have a thread right now, about 16 pages, about 400 posts, about 40,000 views, with fans basically arguing, taking sides, you know, Cardale Jones versus JT Barrett. You know, I, I say just enjoy the ride. Uh, what do you say to these fans who are maybe picking sides and – really can't enjoy the ride, so to speak. Well, you know, it's a great point, and it's a great question, and, and that is part of being a fan and, and part of being a part of a message board like, uh, you know, Bucknuts, where you can really go in and and, uh, and have those conversations with people who can talk intelligently about the team and know about the team, and so that's fun. I mean, that's part of sports, and, you know, I'm, I'm all for that. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate if, if people are starting to gang up or starting to uh, criticize one side or the other in the situation. I don't think that uh, that's warranted. I think both these guys have proven that they're good football players. You know, I think I think that's the thing that, that people have to settle down and remember. Uh, it's not like both of these guys haven't played and, you know, Braxton Miller got hurt at the start of the year and they named Cardale, Cardale the starter and then now he struggled and they went to JT. We, we've seen both of these guys play really, really high level football. We've seen JT play and, and beat Michigan State on the road. You know, we've seen, uh, Cardale Jones do pretty much something that nobody has ever done, go out and beat Wisconsin, beat Alabama, and beat Oregon. So not single-handedly, certainly, but we've seen these guys play elite-level football. So anybody panicking, uh, you know, anybody that, that that's really uh, down on one guy or the other, I think it's a little early. I think it's unwarranted. Um, did Cardale look, look bad in the first quarter of that game on Saturday? He absolutely did, you know, and, and that's the way you're going to get benched is, is if you turn the ball over. I, I personally believe that, that Urban Meyer did not go into that game thinking, you know what, if Cardale struggles, we're going to JT. I think he went in with the same mentality he has every week, which says which quarterback gives us the best chance to go down and score. I think it's Cardale. And then when Cardale turned the ball over twice, he, he looked uh, rattled. He didn't look comfortable. He didn't look like the same guy that, you know, he looked like what I thought we would see from Cardale in that game against Wisconsin. You know, last year when he hadn't played, thrust into action after the injury to JT Barrett, he's going out there and playing in the Big Ten Championship with the lights on. I thought he would struggle, and he didn't. He looked great. And, and I have all the confidence in the world that Cardale Jones can be an elite-level college quarterback. Now, 
I think what we've seen is when things are not going well around Cardale, he doesn't necessarily have the experience. He, he hasn't gotten enough reps. He doesn't have that understanding to know what to do. So really, to me, they've got to run the ball better. They've got to get Ezekiel Elliott going. They've got to get the ball in the hands of Braxton Miller. Uh, and then they've got to protect better. If, if they do a better job protecting up front, um, you know, I think that'll help a lot. Cardale will be able to stretch the field, uh, and, and you won't have to worry as much about which quarterback it should be. Because I think if, if their playmakers are playing well and the Lions protecting, both of these guys can play at a really, really high level. So I think it's a little early for fans to, to really jump on either side. Very well said. Excellent points all the way around. And one minor surprise through the season, through three games, is only three true freshmen have played. Now this is because games have been closer than – Coach Meyer probably expected Hawaii. The final score looks good, 38 to nothing. But that was a you know 17 point game going into the fourth quarter. Obviously, last week against Northern Illinois was close, but still only three true freshmen have played thus far. There are Isaiah Prince, Eric Lover Williams, and Denzel Ward. That will likely change tomorrow. Brandon uh, on his call-in show yesterday, Coach Meyer said KJ Hill is likely to make his debut wide receiver for the Buckeyes. Paris Campbell, of course, is going to be out this game with the bruised knee. He also talked about a few other guys. He says Matt Burrell is close. I tend to think they want a redshirt Matt Burrell, but it's good to know that he's coming along well and they like him. They like Mike Weber. They think he might be able to return next week from that torn meniscus. But just your thoughts on K.J. Hill perhaps making his debut tomorrow and the fact that only three true freshmen have played thus far for the Buckeyes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and we're talking about a really, really talented class. Obviously, most of Urban Myers or all of his classes, really, even going back to his first class that he kind of scrambled to put together, have been uh, really elite level. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of talent in this freshman class. But a big part of that is, you know, A, they, they've they returned a lot of people from last year's team that went to the national championship and won the national championship. So they returned a, a lot of the playmakers they had on offense. They returned four starters on the offensive line. You know, they did lose some guys on defense and Michael Bennett and Duran Grant and Curtis Grant, but, um, you know, they really had guys ready to step in. You know, guys like Tommy Shutt, Michael Hill were ready to step in as Adolphus Washington slid over. Uh, Gary Ann Conley has stepped in and hasn't looked back, you know, as a starting cornerback. And then obviously, uh, Raekwon McMillan was kind of waiting in the wings for his shot. So there were kind of guys ready to go. And even that, even on the offense, Chase Ferris being a, a senior and a guy who's played a lot and, you know, moved around and, and was kind of waiting for that opportunity. So to me, there, I'm not surprised that a lot of freshmen haven't played because the other thing is they haven't played that well. You know, they, they played well enough to, to look good and win against Virginia Tech on the road. So you're not expecting a lot of true freshmen to play in the opener at night at Virginia Tech. But then the last two weeks, Hawaii uh, and this last week, Northern Illinois, they didn't play well enough. They didn't play well enough to go to say we're going to throw true freshmen out there. So I'm not surprised. Um, you know, I think those they got to get guys like Matt Burrell and Mike Weber ready to go because I don't think they have enough depth at those positions. You know, I think the offensive line, tons of talent. You know, they've got an experienced group up front and then a lot of talent behind them, but a lot of young guys. So to me, they've got to get those guys ready. And then, again, I've said this in a couple of my columns, I'm not sure what you'd do if something happened to Zeke for any amount of time um, you know, who's your, who's your running back? Are you going to go with Curtis Samuel? Are you going to try to give Briante Dunn or Warren Ball a chance? My, my feeling is they'd like to get uh, Weber ready to go if they needed him. You know, I, uh, hopefully they won't for their sake, but if they did, they'd like to get him ready to go. Now, now Hill's a little bit of a different story to me because I think they haven't seen enough from their outside receivers stretching the field. You know, with Paris Campbell out, I think they like him a lot. They liked what he could bring and give them. Obviously, he had a couple drops or, or that fumble in the opener, but they, they like what he can give them. Uh, but I think they're looking for another guy, you know, and, and that's crazy because they have a ton of talent at the receiver position, but uh, they need another guy that can stretch the field, that can make some plays down the field. Maybe that's Corey Smith. You know, maybe that's one of these other guys, Johnny Dixon, or, um, you know, so one of the other guys who are, who are available at, at that outside spot. I think they've got plenty of talent inside with Samuel and Braxton and Dontre Wilson. Um, but, you know, I think they're still looking for one more guy on the outside and, and kind of going to put some pressure on some of those old, older guys like James Clark to see who can step up and make a play. And one more true freshman that Coach Meyer mentioned yesterday on his call-in show was Jerome Baker. He said the linebacker is very close to being ready. So there you go. If you're wondering which of the three true freshman linebackers are ahead of the other, Jerome Baker sounds like he's a little bit ahead of Nick Connor and Justin Hilliard at this point. So we'll see. Maybe Jerome Baker will get on the field at this point. It's going to be very surprising if all three of those highly touted freshman linebackers don't even play at all this year. Even on, I thought they'd be all over special teams, all three of them. So that's one to keep an eye on. Uh, Western Michigan predictions. Let's finish the show with this Bcast. Uh, Thirty-one and a half point spread. We're used to these robust spreads for the Buckeyes this year. I have them barely covering. I know Western Michigan's a good team, well coached by PJ Fleck. I'm a big fan of his. I have Ohio State winning forty-nine to seventeen. So I have them winning by thirty-two points, covering by the narrowest of margins, zero point five points. 
Uh, give me your prediction, sir. Uh, how's this game going to go tomorrow? What's going to be the final score? Ooh, that, that's a great question because, you know, it, I think this is a hard team to predict right now because they're capable of putting 70 up, you know, on, on Saturday. They're capable of going out there and, and hanging 70 on, on any of these, these early conference teams. And obviously I think Northern Illinois, uh, Northern Illinois was, a, was a really good football team, but I think they're capable of, of going out and hanging a lot of points on just about anybody. Um, you know, they're coming off of a game where they, they lost 52 to 20 against Michigan. Um, but, you know, they, they early in the season, they hung with Michigan State. So, I, you know, I had 37-24. So I actually don't think they're going to cover. I think we're looking at about a 27-point game. I could see it. You know, even though Michigan hung 52 on them last week, I, you know, it, it's tough because if they go out and play the way that they can, you know, I think they can win this game by 50. But until I see it, I'm not going to call it. You know, I'm not going to say automatically assume they've got everything figured out and they're going to go out and dominate. Um, you know, I want to see those guys up front go out and play better. I, I think Billy Price, Jacoby Boren, uh, Pat Offline, those three guys inside have got to play better, open some holes uh, for Ezekiel Elliott in the running game. So, you know, I'm going to say something something around the lines of, uh, you know, 45 to 20, you know, the, where you're looking at like a 25-point game. I still think they're going to win handedly. Uh wouldn't surprise me to see them, you know, put up a couple extra touchdowns and, and, and cover that. Um, you know, because obviously you and I both know the talent there. It's really not a matter of talent. It's just a matter of finding that rhythm. And it's a matter of one of these quarterbacks feeling comfortable enough to go out and really play well, not be looking over their shoulder, uh, and get into a rhythm. If that happens, you know, they could, they could beat them by 50. If, if they don't find that rhythm, I think that there will be some moments where they struggle a little bit and, and then pull away at the end. Great insights from Brandon Castell. Brandon, thank you so much for your time, and thanks to the listeners out there. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great day and a great weekend. Take it away, best damn band in the land. Five, five, five.